This week on Quadriga. Syrian nightmare. Countdown to intervention. U.S. officials say they're now certain Bashar al-Assad's government troops are responsible for chemical attacks last week. The U.N. special envoy to Syria has confirmed that the attack appears to have killed hundreds of men, women and children on the outskirts of Damascus. Western leaders are determined to respond. But Russia and Iran have warned against taking military action. What consequences will strikes have? Do radical Islamists stand to benefit most? And would the civil war in Syria really end if Assad's government fell? Your host this week, Ali Aslan. Hello and welcome to Quadriga. The United States and its Western allies are getting ready to strike President Assad. But the question on everyone's mind, of course, is what repercussions will such a strike have, not only in Syria, but also abroad? And that's exactly what we're going to talk about on today's show, together with three individuals who've been following events in Syria very closely. Welcome to Fawaz Tello, who is part of, the, of Syria's secular opposition movement. He's been living in exile in Germany since 2012. From 2001 to 2006, he was imprisoned by the Assad regime. Stefan Buchen is with the German network ARD. He reports frequently from the Middle East and the Arab world. And Alison Smale is the Berlin bureau chief of the New York Times. She's been with the Times since 1998 and previously served as the executive editor of the International Herald Tribune. Welcome to you all. Much to talk about. Very critical times in Syria. Alison Smale, the United States, uh, says, says undeniable proof, undeniable proof that President Assad has used chemical uh, weapons against its own people. Would you agree? Is that also your understanding? Well, I think it's hard for those of us who do not have access to U.S. intelligence to know whether we can make that judgment or not. And in saying that, um, the shadow of Iraq really does hang over this debate. I mean, I actually remember being in New York the day that Colin Powell went, made his famous presentation to the United Nations in 2003, which later turned out to be not exactly as he had presented it. And he himself felt betrayed, I think we can say, by a combination of whoever put that presentation together. So. This is tricky stuff. At the same time, the cry goes up. Something outrageous seems to have happened in Syria. Hundreds of people are dead. There is a call for action. If the United States wants to show that it is the world's biggest military power, which it undi undeniably is, um, how can it use that power and to influence events and to express the outrage that, for instance, the German foreign minister has called this a crime against civilization, um, which I think is a way to sort of put a cast on the debate that the Germans would prefer not to discuss military action. The British and the French seem ready to join the Americans in some sort of limited action. But um, David Cameron, clearly mindful of Tony Blair not having gotten parliamentary approval for the war in Iraq, has called Parliament back and wants to get parliamentary approval for whatever he does. Stefan Buchen, of course, there's no way for us here indeed to verify w whether or not such a chemical attack uh, was, uh, took place or rather was perpetrated by Assad. But what is certainly not in question, it seems, not even by the Russians, is that such an attack did take place. Um, Doctors Without Borders are saying they treated over 3,000 patients with neurotoxic symptoms of whom 355 people died. And even the Russians, even the Russians say, yes, it's probably most likely that such an attack took place. But the Russians are placing the blame on the opposition. What do you make of this? Just a tactic to uh, distract? I, I think um, the different parties, the Russians uh, on the one side, on the one side, and the Americans on the other side, the West on the other side, they are playing the political game now. Uh, Russia has been supporting Assad since the beginning of the crisis and uh, the West has been supporting um, the opposition. So it's uh, a revival of a Cold War atmosphere and now uh, the Russians are using that shadow uh, Ms. Allison pointed to uh, of a cast by the Iraq war and the case uh, made of um, supposed uh, weapons of mass destruction 
in, in the hands of Saddam Hussein, which uh, came out untrue. So uh, now uh, the Russians, in my view, are using this, these doubts um, uh, to um, blame the opposition. But, um, okay, as you say, there seems to be undeniable proof that chemical weapons were used in the east of Damascus, but uh, we don't have undeniable true, uh, proof about the perpetrators. But, of course, uh, it seems more likely that uh, these chemical weapons were used by the regime, because uh, the question is how the opposition could possibly have access to these weapons. The argument the Russians put forth, Fawaz Tello, is that President Assad would not have used chemical weapons against its own people while UN inspectors were already in Syria. UN inspectors were already in Syria when this attack took place. And the Russians are saying even Assad is not that reckless to do so in front of the very eyes of the inspectors. I What's think, your point? I think Assad is so confident that because since two years till now, nothing has happened to him. Let me remind you that we have before Mr. Kofi Annan uh, uh, inspection, uh, inspection uh, people were there in Syria and he commit already commit crimes uh, with the attendance of, the, of, of that uh, observers. Also, we have the committee for the Arab uh, League. Uh, it have, uh, also, the uh, yani murders have been commits. So it's it's he was fully confident. By the way, the chemical weapons have been used for about 14 year, uh, times before in in, 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 a, in a, uh, some small points. Like, and uh, the opposition was all the time taking uh, asking for uh, investigation. Uh, inspectors to, to come to, uh, to cover it, and they will very fully cooperate with that. Like, there is no deniable that le, le, uh, the last attack, about 1,700 people has been killed. Those people did not suicide. Those people, the, uh, pol, pol, yani, the opposition don't have, the, like you said, the material uh, and this uh, technique to do what is happening. But it's, it's not something you can uh, buy it from the supermarket, the, 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 the chemical weapons. Yeah. It needs uh, some uh, procedures for that. And uh, thus, the opposition didn't kill their people just to, to, to execute uh, uh, yeah, the, the regime. The regime has been forgivable for, for, for a long time, for two years, over two years now of, of, of crimes, and he was fully confident that it, it will pass. And actually what's happening in, uh, in the last attack, it was part of a uh, uh, military attack on the countryside of Damascus. So it's part of a military attack. It's not just for killing people. It's he, was, he, he wanted to regain uh, 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 that area. And Alison Small, with the possible exceptions of Russia and Iran, the international community pretty much subscribes to the notion that President Assad has used chemical weapons against its own people and uh, in doing so has crossed the famous red line that President Obama set forth. Um, in hindsight, now his hands are tied, the pressure is on him, his credibility is very much at stake. Do you think it was wrong of President Obama back then to put forth such a red line? I think it's always really difficult to tell whether you, you draw a red line publicly or you draw it in private. If, he, if it was only drawn in private, um, let's imagine he had not said this, but this attack had happened. Hundreds of civilians are dead. The outrage around the world would, would still have been there. The pressure would still be there on the United States to act. In my view, but it really is just my personal view, I think that discussing whether Mr. Obama was right or wrong to speak of a red line is really to blur the true debate, which is, are we going to take some military action or not? And if we do, what are the consequences? Have we weighed any, all sorts of repercussions or not? Um, and how do we plan to, I mean, if, as the talk is, of launching cruise missiles to spe against specified sites, probably in and around Damascus. Um, and that is an action that lasts, let's say, two or three days. What has it achieved if it takes place? And what happens if something, you know, it sounds an odd thing to say, goes wrong, but if a civilian target is struck, 
I mean, I think we saw very quickly, even after 9-11, tremendous outpouring of solidarity around the world for the United States. But about a month into the conflict in Afghanistan, as soon as a Red Cross center was struck, you know, a lot of Europeans were immediately, ah, oh, you see, the United States doesn't know how to wage war, and this is an unjustified use of military power. It's a tricky one. It's what? a tricky one, Chevan Bouhan. Let me just uh, point the following fact out that some people, the argument that some people have suggested, they're saying over 100,000 people have already been killed in this conflict in Syria. And now chemical attacks have been used against its own people by President Assad. What has changed at the end of the day for President, uh, for President Obama? 100,000 people have already been killed. What's so different about this chemical attack, about the 300 casualties now that the U.S. is deciding to step in? Okay, a year ago we were discussing here um, the uh, approximate end of the Assad regime when an attack was carried out against his uh, security officials, uh, leading security of officials in Damascus. And uh, I said then that we are facing an ever escalating war and this is not the end yet. And um, I think the use of chemical weapons is another step in this ever uh, escalating war. I think that so uh, the, West, the, the, the West... You could argue to the dead it doesn't matter how no, they were being no. killed. I won't argue that. I want to make another point. The, the West and the international community as a whole, including Russia and China, failed in one thing. They failed in um, reining in the, this escalation. There was no credible threat against the Assad regime from the beginning of this crisis uh, to show him we are ready to use force if you uh, cross over some critical uh, steps like the use of chemical weapons um, and um, there was not such a credible threat built up by the West, by the Obama uh, administration uh, at the first point. Uh, the, the, his talk about uh, the red, uh, red lines uh, was not taken seriously by um, Syrian decision makers so uh, that's one reason why we see now this use of chemical weapons. And um, the question is, if there is now a symbolic uh, strike uh, by cruise missiles uh, or other military means against some targets in Syria, what will be the outcome? Maybe the message will be, okay, now we send the message that you must not use chemical weapons, but please go on with the war. And indeed, Fawaz Tello, the White House press secretary, has already said that the strikes, if they were to occur, are not, not about regime change. That is not the aim and mission of the United States. Rather, supposed to be limited, punitive strikes, and no intervention, no ground troops. That has been ruled out from the get-go. So the question, it begs indeed the question, what will those punitive, limited strikes, what could they accomplish? Actually, uh, uh this is uh, taking us back why this, uh, what's happening, happening. You see, before one, one year, we have a very huge massacre in Daraya, uh, uh, just a small town beside Damascus. 2,000 people have been killed, but they have been not with, with chemical, uh, chemical weapons, but have been, they have been shooted or slaughtered. Before a few, a few, a few, a few uh, uh, months we have uh, a lot, about 2,000 people in, in, in the coast have been also massacred or, or shooted. So it's, it's not a matter of how many casualties or it's, uh, like you said, it's, you know, it's why. I think, and this will answer your question, what's happening now that Mr. Obama is feeling impressed because for this red line, which I'm sure he is regret that he just <laughs> talked about it before, and there is a lot of pressure inside the, the, the American administration in the Congress for, for Mr. Obama to do a, a, a reaction. Uh, so he has to do something, but he wants to be, to be limited. Uh, why? To, to uh, the purpose, I think, was what's happening. First of all, is uh, the impression of, 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 uh, of Mr. Obama. Second, it's to weaken a little uh, the regime, a little uh, uh, bit military, but to weaken very, uh, so much politically, so you can pull him to the to a negotiating table in the in the Geneva. 
And the third reason I think it's very important, the refugee issue is very important. Look, Jordan is facing a, a cat catastrophe now, and they are, they are facing a, a possibility of collapsing of the regime because of, 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 what's, of the refugee uh, 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 problem there. Uh, Jordan is very uh, sensitive and fragile country, economically, politically, socially. What's happening now, about 20% of the uh, Jordanian population is, uh, is refugee. And we have now about 1.5 million of refugees in the countryside of Damascus, which have been under the attack. Most pos uh, possible those people, especially if it have been repeated, those people will, 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 will leave to, uh, to Jordan. And this is the, uh, one of the main reasons which just hiding in, in, in the back, which puts the, the American to do something. It's not the, 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 the chemical weapon, it's not the victims, it's the refugee issue, which, which will, will and, and one, the Turkey, I, th I think, uh, don't, don't have this uh, yani, uh, kind of problem, but they can use that execute of the refugee to make an interfere. And this is what they were arguing since about two years ago. And Turkey, of course, is one of those countries who have already pledged their support for the United States, Alison Smail, and so has the UK. In fact, the UK has put forth the UN Security Council resolution authorizing necessary measures to protect civilians. And the argument goes again, do we need, does the United States and its Western allies, do they need a UN mandate to strike against Syria? If you were to ask the Russians, of course, they're saying any action without a UN mandate would be a violation of international law. Would you agree? Well, I think there's a lot of things that have been banded about in the last few days as part of a discussion. One is, what is the comparison here? On what basis does one take action or not take action? Um, one comparison that's been used is Kosovo, because that's an example of where the United States and its allies took action, but without UN Security Council backing, because again, Russia was allied with the Serbs and felt that it couldn't endorse this kind of action. Also, I mean, if, if you take that comparison further, I'm not sure it's a good one, because um, the bombing involved striking targets in, Be in downtown Belgrade, for instance, um, I don't think anybody is talking here about a bombing campaign against government installations in downtown Damascus. Um, then the next point is that the, uh, some people are arguing that the Chemical Weapons Convention from 1925 would give the legal mandate to act here because you've got to make sure that this is enforced and that chemical weapons are not used in conflict. It seems like a fairly thin cover, if you like. Um, I think, you know, we face the eternal question, and certainly this came up during World War II. Um, you're faced with evidence of an outrage, what do you do? And to what extent can you base your action on moral and political considerations? To what extent do you need um, international law? And the other thing I just would, would point out is that the Russians have been very consistent in this conflict in that they are backing Assad, but they're not saying that he actually will stay there forever. Um, Arabists in the old Soviet Union and in Russia now were considered very much the creme de la creme of the diplomatic corps. They have several people who speak really good Arabic and have great contacts in the Arab world. Their view is you don't change horses in midstream. Um, they were horrified when the United States dropped support for Mubarak in Egypt, not because they love Mubarak, but because they think in this region, you stick with the, with the person that you have always backed. Now, obviously, there are also other considerations for Russia. Thousands and thousands of Russians living in Syria, who they're beginning to evacuate now. Um, a warm water port and just the sheer weight of historical ties. Um, so it's not just kind of willful, we're going to not do what the Americans want. I mean, in fact, I think you see that John Kerry and Lavrov, the F Russian foreign minister, have been in close contact for several months trying to get a negotiation going in Geneva. Um, and I don't think that all of those things were just sort of shadow boxing. I think there was sincerity there.
Well, whether a UN mandate is forthcoming or not is yet to see. But what seems to be rather certain is that a strike is imminent. The United States seems very much determined to send a message to President Assad, putting most people around the world on the edge, discussing this very nature, discussing this very topic worldwide. Let's have a look. On the streets of Moscow, many Russians say they stand behind their government's support for the Assad regime. The Americans have no right to intervene. It's up to the Syrians to decide things for themselves. The Americans have intervened all over the world. When people get involved from outside, it only serves to intensify conflict. I think military intervention should be an absolute last resort. After over a decade of military action in Iraq and Afghanistan, many Americans are weary of war. I think there's uh, other people in the area who maybe should intervene before people in this country get involved. I would rather see the United Nations intervene, but I do think intervention is warranted. Fearing their country could be drawn into the war, hundreds of Israelis lined up to collect gas masks in Jerusalem. Israeli citizens are panicking. Unfortunately, the Israeli military, who is trying to avoid a state of panic, has not adjusted its service accordingly. It's a bit of a surreal experience. I've never been in this situation before, so it's a little bit exciting, admittedly, but it's very, it is very terrifying, and I just really pray that I'm never going to really need to use it. Well, Stefan Buchen, we just saw some concerned Israeli citizens, and by all accounts, it's, uh, that concern is justified, isn't it? Because Iran has, has <clears throat> made very clear that any attack, any attack on Syria will be retaliated with a strike on Israel. What do you make of this? Okay, I would like to stress that the people who basically are suffering from this war is the Syrian people, uh, with millions of refugees and more than 100,000 dead people. And it's obvious that citizens of all the surrounding countries are concerned as well, including the people of Israel. And it's very natural that uh, the Israeli government um, is trying to protect uh, its citizens by dispatching gas masks, uh, knowing uh, very well that uh, the Syrian regime uh, possesses uh, chemical weapons and uh, the ability to um, launch uh, missiles uh, with, uh, equipped with chemical weapons uh, on a far distance. So, uh, but Israel has other means of protecting itself. Uh, there's a shield, uh, an anti-missile shield, uh, which seems to be working. So, um, it's natural that they take some measures of uh, caution and protection, but uh, I don't expect uh, an escalation in the sense of um, awaiting an exchange of uh, missiles or air attacks between Israel and Syria. So you we, have to, we have to remember that Israel interfered, did interfere several times this year in this war, but um, the, in my view um, the targets were uh, Hezbollah convoys. Hezbollah has, had been um, uh, stocking arms on Syrian ter territory considering that these arsenals are secure there, but this was a consideration dating from before the war in Syria, and now Hezbollah tries to transfer these arms stocks to Lebanon, and Israel wants to uh, prevent them from doing so. Just so, to clarify, just to no. clarify, you're saying mm. the threat on the part of Israel, you don't, uh, on the part of Iran vis-a-vis -vis Israel, you don't deem to be Okay, Credible. I, didn't, I, I, I didn't mention uh, Iran yet. I mentioned Hezbollah, and uh, I, I point to the fact that Hezbollah tries to uh, transfer arms stocks from Syrian territory to Lebanese territory. So obviously, there is the possibility of Hezbollah um, opening a new front against Israel uh, as part of this war. I mean, we have to. We are. In, facing a, situ a situation which is very, very unclear and difficult. Maybe uh, everything will, be, will end with some symbolic strikes uh, on military targets in Syria by the Americans, and then 
and they go on with their war within Syria, and maybe it will be the beginning of World War III. We don't know. Um, if Iran is drawn in this and Israel will uh, retaliate any attacks uh, by Hezbollah on Haifa or other places in Israel. So there is potential for a huge escalation. And indeed, the geographical situation is quite delicate for Wastello, but nowhere is the situation as delicate and severe as in Syria itself, of course. Which leads me to the question, because you still have friends in Syria, you have family, you're still in touch with them. How is the announcement on the part of President Obama to finally take action against President Assad? How is that, this news being perceived back home, back in Syria? Actually, the main concern for some people who still live uh, lives in the under the, the, the regime, in the regime area, is that those people, they, they don't want to be attacked. Otherwise, they don't care about what will happen with the regime. On the other side, uh, for the refugee, for those people who have been suffering, all of them, they, they, are, they, they are welcoming this kind of uh, attacks. But, but all of all those, of those people, even the, those people who are fighting on the ground, believe that, the, uh, that um, this attack is, uh, has a limited uh, purpose. So uh, it's, it's not for get rid of the uh, uh, regime. It's part of a very complicated uh, yani, uh, uh, issue. In, in the, but let me have, uh, make a focus on, on a point. What's happening now with, with this strike, I think, it's just opening a door. This Pandora <laughs> yani, box, which you can't expect uh, what's really happening unless you know the action and direction from the other side. I don't think the Iranian will, will attack. The Iranian used to use their arms in the, in, 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 in the, in the, in the region, especially the mercenaries of Hezbollah and, uh, and some, people in, uh, some of those people in Iraq, but they will not interfere directly. They will, nobody will, will attack Israel. This is my, my opinion. Maybe some of these uh, pro-Palestinian uh, uh, groups will be uh, launch some rockets here or there for, for the Israeli in some, in some point, but it's, it will be nothing in, 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 in uh, this case. So the main battle will be will still in, 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 in uh, Syria. What will happen after this, uh, after this? This is what will give you how it will going to escalate it. I expect that we will... Uh, we will see another attacks in, in, in the coming future. It's not continuous attacks, but, uh, but according to, for, a, for a, sp a special political and sometimes military agenda to, to, to push forward for, for, uh, 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 for a political solution or to give more messages for the regime that he should not cross the red line. It's not the chemical weapons, only the red lines. It's attacking the Israel for the red lines for the, for, for the world. So he, and, and I think the regime understand this kind of uh, red line. And Alison Smale, now that President Assad seems to have crossed that red line, some U.S. security officials are only cautiously applauding, if you will, the move or the announcement on the part of President Assad because they're saying that the attack on Syria and on President Assad at the end of the day might benefit radical Islamists because as we know some Syrian rebel factions have ties to Al-Qaeda and there are voices out there particularly in the United States who say yes of course we want to get rid of Assad we want to end this conflict but uh, we are also fearing the possibility of ending up with uh, if you will other individuals who are, who are not exactly, uh, uh, you know, favorable to us as well. Mm -hmm. What do you make of well, this? Well, I mean, I think Stefan hit the point and also your consideration of how people feel inside Syria. And we are looking at an unpredictable situation here. Ever since the so-called Arab Spring um, began, what, two and a half years ago, um, the region has become definitely less predictable and more volatile than it had been for many decades. Um, I think that the United States, obviously there's a clear reluctance to stir more trouble for itself. At the same time, how do you maintain your influence as a, as a world power if you don't actually get involved in the region? Um, the other thing that I think has been quite little discussed, particularly here in Germany where the election campaign, the tendency seems to be to keep all issues possibly away from it. Um, so I think one thing that is not being considered very much is 
An unpredictable, simmering Middle East is bound to produce many refugees. Inevitably, many of those people will try to reach Europe. Um, have we considered at all what we, would, what we would do? I mean, last week in Berlin, we saw a tremendous popular opposition to the moving of a few hundred refugee, foreign refugees into some public facilities in the eastern part of Berlin. I just don't feel as if this debate has, has been sort of tied together at all. And, you know, World War III sounds apocalyptic, but we have to be realistic that weapons are doing the talking in several parts of the region. We've also seen what has happened in Egypt. And it's, we should be prepared for a very prolonged period of, of certainly unsettled well, two and a half years of conflict in, within Syria and possibly more within and outside as well. Let's talk about Germany here, Stefan Buchen. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not only the US, of course, it's Western allies, the UK and France have very much rallied around President Obama. And Germany is in the midst of an election campaign. In a month from now, there's going to be a huge and important election campaign coming up here in Germany. Mm. Chancellor Merkel, is Germany's voice important here? As you know, Germany's voice is not important and um, you know that uh, there is a huge reluctance among uh, the government, uh, the foreign ministry and also Chancellor Merkel uh, uh, with regard to interfering militarily in any conflict in the world and this uh, is true also concerning conflict in, in, in Syria. You said that there is a debate, uh, w there should be a debate which is absent from the public scene um, concerning um, the refugee issue and the prospect of uh, many refugees arriving here. You, I agree with you that this is not part of the public debate but I can assure you that this is the only and main issue being discussed within German government circles, they are they it's don't not very they publicly. don't they don't they don't talk about military interference. They don't talk about strategic interests in the Middle East. Mm. They are talking about how can we keep all these refugees away, and they are taking measures against this. This is uh, the main issue uh, concerning German decision makers. And German and decision makers have all. Uh, have made a decision back then in Libya to stay out and it yeah. has cost some, them some sympathies with their NATO allies in particular. Do you think Germany can run the risk once more to stay out if such a strike would occur? I mean, when we look at the issue of Syria, there are strong reasons of not interfering militarily. So uh, this decision by the German government is not so hard to, to argue for because the outcome of any military strike in Syria is very unclear. And um, I, there are some people now, some voices, which I uh, would say uh, are coming out of conspiracy theories that the Americans uh, are looking for a pretext to interfere. This is just untrue because if Obama had been looking for a pretext, he would have found it one a long massive. time ago. So all the, the aim of, uh, of, of Obama has been not to interfere in Syria and staying away as well. Obama is not interested in the Middle East. He uh, looks at the Middle East as a region um, uh, with problems. It's a barrel of problems. So he puts his emphasis and political and geostrategic priorities on the Asian Pacific area and um, uh, militarily, economically, politically. So now against his own will, he is confronted with the choice of maybe interfering militarily in Syria. And um, um, the outcome is, 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 is very unclear because uh, it, the chaos uh, will increase in Syria. And um, I mean, you, you pointed at the, at the prospect of m m killing civilian people, uh, uh, innocent people with such strikes. I mean, very easily uh, a military interference in Syria could in one or day or two kill more civilian people than were killed by these uh, outrageous chemical attacks if you, uh, last week. So um, it's not easy. So Fawaz Tello, 
Let's, let's assume the strikes will take place. I think it is understood, even among military experts and security officials, that these punitive limited strikes will, of course, not lead to Assad's removal. Um, what will, at the end of the day, two and a half years into this conflict, more than 100,000 people dead, close to two million refugees in Syria, which you mentioned, the very dire situation in neighboring countries. At the end of the day, two and, two and a half years, long time, what will remove Assad at the end of the day? What will end this conflict? Arming the opposition or to having a real, a, a real strong message from the international community, from the American and the European especially, that we are going to re get rid of you personally if you, if you didn't leave Syria. This is what I have been uh, putting on. Uh, I, I, I said that few, before a few months uh, in, in Quadriga here. Like, we ha the international community should give him a, a, a real, a very strong message, not only for him, for the uh, military uh, apparatus which support him, which Mainly, it's from uh, uh, Alois. Like, they have to understand that this person and this family is over from from the political life. So, in this case, you can you can give the right message for those people, maybe to have a coup or to make a real pressure against them to get rid of him. And and, and in this case only, we can start a political uh, process with Bashar Assad. With this family, you can't start a political process. I think this. Uh, uh, attack is giving that message for, for, for the people uh, who are supporting uh, in, in Bashar Assad, in, in, uh, and they can understand it, because actually they, they, don't, uh, they, they are really afraid of a real reaction from the, from the um, uh, American, or from, especially from the European. And I want to uh, talk a little about uh, extremists in Syria. Like, look, before one, one and a half year, we don't have any extremists in Syria. As long as this, uh, uh, this crisis is taking more time, we will have more. The main, uh, the main problem we have is Bashar Assad himself. If you get rid of Bashar Assad now, it's better than to get rid of him in the future. He can't be a partner, not now and in, in the future. So do you, do you understand the fears on the part of Western nations, though, who say Assad is the devil we know? We don't know who's, who will replace him? We already we're seeing what what replace, replace him the chaos inside Syria, which go, is going and start to uh, spread it all, all over uh, the region. This is the main, the, the main devil. It's not only for some few of the Islamists, which this small group of is uh, uh, extremists. Just right now, there is uh, attack. There is clashes between them and Free Syrian Army. There are clashes between them and the civilian in, in, in those area where where they uh, attend to. The Syrian people didn't accept this uh, phenomenon in general. To get rid of Bashar Assad, this is the, 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 the main point to get rid of, 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 the, of uh, what's going on. And by the way, be part of change, to be part of those people who is going sit on the table and decide the future of Syria. Otherwise, you can't just sit back aside and said I, I, I and give some advices here uh, here and there and let what's happening just happening there in in in, in, in uh, and this curse is taking over we already have a curse race but the curse will be more uh, more and more in the future Alison Smale has the United States and its Western allies waited too long to take action here I think you it's that's an impossible question to answer give it a shot because um, well, I mean, what you point out, your argument is very strongly that the removal of Bashar Assad would, uh, would move towards a solution. Um, I think that's difficult to calculate because he has been able to hold on for two and a half years. He clearly has some support upon which he can draw within Syrian society, within the Syrian elite. Every time somebody has, major has defected, we've debated the idea that, oh, perhaps now the circle around him is crumbling. It doesn't seem to be. And you can debate, you know, would Russian, a withdrawal of Russian support make a difference? Um, I, I think we don't know the answer to any of these questions. And what we haven't so far seen is a united uh, political and diplomatic will outside of Syria to decide on here's what we want out of this and here's how we're going to get there. I just don't think that we've, we've seen that. Stefan Buchen, what is the scenario here that we're looking at? Uh, of course, we're speculating here, but what is the possible scenario after the US and its Western allies strike President Assad? 
I come back to the point of the ever escalating war and an increasing uh, chaos. Um, I think um, a sure scenario is that we are facing a dying nation. And this is a very sad fact. Uh, if you know Syria and uh, had traveled in Syria, you, know, you would know all the, the richness, the civilizational roots, uh, the diversity. All this is dying. And um, <clears throat> I'm afraid that this death uh, cannot be avoided anymore. It's a crumbling nation, it's falling apart, and it will be virtually impossible, in my view, to put it together again. Fawastello, very pessimistic words from Stefan Buchen. Do you share that sentiment? Are you fearing about the future? Are you fearing for the future of your nation? Perhaps even the possibility that such a state called Syria will not exist in the future? Syria will exist in the future. And uh, not just, it's just not, not a hope. Uh, uh, but uh, but we, we need sometimes to recover of what's happening. And uh, I think this is a very important tool for the international community, including the Arabs and the, uh, and the West, to be part of uh, that reconciliation uh, which will take happen. But it will start with justice. You can't make any kind of consolation without a justice. Uh, this justice could be uh, uh, just be a, a huge and very strong justice and, be, and could be a merciful uh, justice. This depends on how we can get the rid of the regime fastly uh, as long as uh, and how to get rid of the regime is also very much on the mind of President Obama and his Western allies these days. The whole world is watching uh, this events unfold, especially in New York, the Security Council, and we will see what will happen in the next days and weeks to come. We will, of course, follow the story here at DW very intensely. In the meantime, I want to thank my guests for a very spirited discussion, at times pessimistic. I want to thank you out there for watching. See you next week.